or that's the last unit. So square roots and factoring we did in unit 10. And then completing the square and quadratic formula are what we've done here. They, get, they all give us the same exact information. So for a square root or solving by square roots, when to use it is when you have an equation that looks something like this, where all you have is an x squared, you're missing you're missing the bx term. And what I mean by that is all of our quadratics look like ax squared plus bx plus c when we put them into standard form. So when it's missing this middle bx term, square roots is going to be your easiest way to solve. And how did we solve by square roots? We got x squared equals 9 and then we square rooted to get x is equal to plus or minus 3. Okay, so that's when we want to use square roots. It's the easiest way to do it. Could we do it another way? Yes, but it's going to be longer. <clears throat> the next method we had was factoring. You want to do factoring when you have something that you can factor. And you want it to be something that you can see easily to factor. So if it's one of those that has big numbers in every spot, it might be factorable, but it might not be easy to factor. So if it's not going to be something that's easy to factor for you, then don't factor. But this one should be easily factorable. So does anyone see how we can factor this? <coughs> but we're factoring. X uh, minus three and X minus two. But we need it to multiply to a negative. If they're both two and three are negative, it'll actually multiply to a positive, but you're on the right track. If we did x minus 6, x plus 1, <clears throat> then we would have our easily factorable. And then to go from there, we take each factor, set it equal to 0. And we get x is equal to 6 and negative 1 as our two solutions. So if it's not something that's obviously factorable to you, or it's going to take more than a couple minutes of thought, then I would move on to a different method. The next one we did was completing the square. Now completing the square When should we use completing the square? Well, it's easiest to use when a is equal to 1. So in other words, we don't have a GCF. If you're going to have a GCF, that makes completing the square not impossible, but a little bit harder. So we don't like to do completing the square if we have a GCF, just because it's not the easiest way. You also want your b to be even. Why do you think we would want b to be even? Because we have to divide it by 2. So if you're going to do completing the square, you really want to try to pick, do, pick this method for problems that have a 1 for in front of your x squared already, and where your middle term or your b term is even. That way you avoid fractions. OK? <clears throat> um, let's see. And then the last one, quadratic formula. Use this 
when no other option is available or option works easily works and that's just because quadratic formula does take a little more time it'll get you your answer but it's just a formula you have to memorize and a lot of simplifying you have to do so we tend to use it on the ones that can't factor completing the square is not easy and can't be done by square roots then you do quadratic formula Okay. so unless a problem specifically states a method you're going to get to choose how you solve it. So there could be four different ways to, bless you, to solve it depending on what you choose. So what we're going to look at right now are just four where we're not going to solve them yet. We're just going to think about what method could we use to solve it. So look at the characteristics in, the, in each equation and see which one matches a method that you think would work. And you could have more than one method for each one of these. So what do you think about number one? Michaela? Can it factor? No, but at least you tried to look for it, which is a good thing. Okay, so this one we could do complete the square because we have the one in front and the even number here. That would be a good option. So factoring, when you take a second look, it doesn't quite factor. Any other methods you might use here? You can. Okay, quadratic formula would also work. <coughs> okay, what about number two? What might you try using there? Quadratic. quadratic. Any others that you might try? Do you want to even try completing the square? Probably not, just because you have a three, you have a, you'd have a GCF, and that's an odd number. Now factoring, um, I don't think this factors either. So yeah, I think we have to do quadratic formula. It's the only one that'll work. Okay, what about number three? Okay, we could do complete the square because we have the one in front and an even. What else could we do? Hmm? Okay, this one does factor, so we could factor. What else could we do? The quadratic formula. Which one would be the easiest to do though? The factoring. So if you can see that it's factorable, try to do the factoring. Okay, and what about number four? What might you use there? Hmm? Square roots. Could we use anything else? <coughs> you could factor it, it's difference of squares. So you could factor. You could technically do completing the square also because what's your BX? What's that middle term? Nope. Zero. Zero, you can divide by two easily. Now, is it the best way to do it? No, it's the longest way to do it. Okay, so <clears throat> if you're looking at your 11.6 worksheet, which is what you're going to be working on, on numbers one, two, and three, there's three questions for each one. So there's nine problems there. You get to choose the method you want to solve each one. So you choose if it's completing the square, you choose if you want to do quadratic formula, and you choose if you want to factor it. I'll tell you right now, none of them are square roots. So it's one of those three. And that's what you're doing on, number, on one through three. 
on five, you're gonna, it's telling you a, the same problem. You're going to solve it three different ways and decide which way was the easiest. Okay, that's what you're doing on the front side. So are there any questions about what the front side of worksheet six is asking? Okay, it's pretty much just reviewing all of your methods together. Now the back side's reviewing graphing. And so we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do next, is we're just gonna review our three types of graphing. <coughs> Two of them we did in our last unit. One of them we're doing here. So we have three forms in which we can write a quadratic, vertex, standard, and intercept. And we're finding the same information on each one. They just look different at the start. You're going to need to leave space for you to do some work, though. So don't leave all, don't make your graphs the entire space. The first thing we're going to find is the vertex. Or that's <coughs> one of the things we're going to find is the vertex. We're also going to find the axis of symmetry, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept. We're doing these four things on all three. So if we start with vertex form, what's our vertex? Which one was it? Sorry. Three comma two. Okay. So what's our axis of symmetry equation? X equals three. X equals three. So then the x-intercepts, how can we find the x-intercepts? You guys remember how we did that last time? We set y equal to 0. So I'm going to put 0 equals negative 2. <coughs> x plus minus 3 squared plus 2. <coughs> so this is where we solved by square roots. So we minus 2 to both sides. And then we divided by negative 2. And then we square root both sides. So we get 3 plus or minus 1 equals x. So that's what we did in our last unit. So that means our x-intercepts would be at... 4, 0, and 3 minus 1, that would be 2, 0. And then lastly, our y-intercept. Did not leave myself a number in here. <coughs> we put 0 in for x. So we'll have negative 2, 0 minus 3 squared plus 2. So let's see, negative 3 squared would give us positive 9. So 
So negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. So 0, negative 16. That's not going to fit on my graph. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect the dots that do. And we have our graphing by vertex form. So you're going to have two of these on your assignment where you're going to graph using vertex form like you did in our last unit. Then you're going to have two that are factored form. So what can we easily find in factored form? <coughs> the x-intercepts. So that's where we're going to start. So if we look at our problem here, what are the x-intercepts? Negative 2, 0, and positive 4, 0. So if we go and sketch the plot those, so negative 2 and 4, what did we find after the intercepts? The axis of symmetry. So to find that, we found the middle. So our middle is 1. So our vertex is 1 comma something. How do we find that something that goes with our vertex? Plug 1 into the equation, so negative 1 half. Let's see, 1 plus 2 and 1 minus 4. Negative 1 half times 3 times negative 3. So it looks like we're going to get a fraction here, 9 over 2. So that's 1 comma 9 halves is 4 and a half. So I'm going to go up about 4 and a half. So what's the last thing we need to find here? the y-intercept, so that's when we set x equal to 0. So we'll have negative 1 half times 2 times negative 4. So that'll give us negative 8, and then negative 8 times negative 1 half will give us 4. So 0, yes? Is it down to the right? More. The next, um, like where you started the second one. This? To the right. Of that. Yeah, right there. Right there. That's me plugging 1 in, so for x. So oh. negative 1 half, 1 plus 2, 1 minus 4. So 0, 4. So it's going to look something like this when we connect all of our dots. So on the back side, you have two vertex, two factored, and you also have two standard. Now, we haven't done a whole lot of graphing with standard. We usually look to change it to factored or vertex, but you technically don't have to. If you want, start with your axis of symmetry and your vertex, just like we did before, or just like we did with um, the vertex form. So how can we find our axis of symmetry over here? What's the formula? Negative b over 2a. So we have negative b over 2a. So what would that give us? Positive 1. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 1. So 1 is the x value of our vertex. So then what can we do to find the y value of our vertex? Plug it in. So we'll have 1 <coughs> squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. So 1 minus 2 minus 3 give us negative 4. Now for the x-intercepts, this is where we choose our method because it's, it's up to us. We could factor it. We could complete the square. Quadratic formula. So which one do you want to do here? Factor, complete the square, or quadratic formula? Factor. Okay, so this one is factorable. x minus 3 times x plus 1. So what would our x-intercepts be? 
Hmm? Three and negative one, so negative one and three. And what's our whoops? What's our y-intercept? Negative three, because standard form quickly tells us that, so we don't have to do any additional work for that. So I can go ahead and plot that as well. Connect the dots, and we have our graph. Yes, sir. No. The only time you want to convert to decimal is if it says to in the directions. Here I believe your directions say to leave in, it doesn't say, just leave it in simplest radical form. Okay, so the back side, you're doing two of each one of these just so that you review the different methods um, because you do have more graphing on this unit on your test, but they're gonna all start off for the most part looking in standard form and you can choose whether you want to convert it to vertex form and graph it in vertex, if you want to factor it and graph it in factor, or if you just want to graph it in standard by using that axis of symmetry formula. Okay.